The European Court of Human Rights has recently published its annual report. In the light of this, Euronews went to Strasbourg to interview the court's newly appointed president, Frenchman Jean-Paul Costa. He's only been in the job since January the 19th, but has firm ideas about his position and the role of the court. Among other things, he says he's committed to improving its workings. Involved in more than 90,000 cases, some say it's becoming a victim of its own success. With the publication of the court's annual report, are there clear indications where the number of complaints has gone up and where they've gone down? Fortunately, there has been a reduction in the number of complaints concerning the most serious violations of human rights. For example, Article 2, which relates to the respect of human life, and Article 3, which relates to the banning of torture. On the other hand, there are more complaints concerning freedom of expression, equal rights, and the law relating to ownership and property. We had an interesting French example concerning the freedom of expression. It involved a journalist who was accused of slandering the Catholic Church. He'd said that if one looks at numerous critical remarks made by the Church over the centuries, one might understand modern-day anti-Semitism and even the concentration camps. The journalist was convicted by the French courts, but we said this was an infringement of his freedom of speech. Can you give an indication of which countries are making the most progress? Looking at the greatest reduction in the number of complaints, we can mention Italy and the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom, probably because their law has for many years incorporated the Convention on Human Rights as a basic right. Italy, because cases were taking so long in coming before an internal court in the first instance that the country introduced legislation known as the Pinto Law to speed up procedures. Many cases are now resolved internally. And then there is a country at the bottom of the table, Turkey. There were so many human rights violations, namely involving the Kurdish conflict, that Turkey has finally recognized it must address the problem. And which countries could be called bad students? I wouldn't say bad students, but there are some countries which are top of the league in provoking complaints against them. Russia, for example, but also Ukraine, Romania, Poland and still Turkey. And then you have countries where there are serious human rights violations. Russia, because of the Chechnya conflict and the general treatment of prisoners. In Ukraine, the legal system functions very badly. Often no judgment is handed down at all. And then there are countries whose performance depends on the year and the nature of the accusations. Et puis, bien sûr, il y a d'autres pays où ça dépend un peu des années, ça dépend un peu du hasard des requêtes. Sometimes the court has been criticized for the length of time it takes to resolve a case. Is it really necessary to take so long, or can things be speeded up? We aim to set an average time of not more than three years, but this is of course an average. And by the very nature of the issues, they are very serious and complex. But we can act quickly. In the case of an elderly person in prison, for example, or in the Pretty case in the United Kingdom, that was where a terminally ill woman wanted the assistance of her husband to commit suicide. In this case, the court gave a judgment in a matter of weeks. Can you name instances where the law of a country has been changed following a judgment from your court? Fortunately, there are quite a few. For example, England and France, they were obliged to change their laws on phone tapping. And in France, a law dating back to the Napoleonic Civil Code had to be changed as it discriminated against children born outside marriage. And there are even some cases where a country has had to change its constitution. Turkey. 
Its Court of National Security was not constituted properly. It had two civil judges and one military one. The military judge was not independent enough, nor impartial. Following judgments from the European Court, the Constitution of Turkey, which oversees the Security Court, had to be changed. Ce juge militaire n'était pas suffisamment indépendant et impartial. Et bien, à la suite d'arrêt de la Cour, la Constitution turque, qui avait prévu la composition des cours de sûreté de l'État, a été changée. You've only recently taken up your position as the court's president. What would you say are your priorities? I want to create a more slimline court. That is the aim of pending reforms. But also to maintain the high quality of the decisions and judgments made. That's a major priority as they have consequences for all of Europe. And then, of course, I'd like to gather my colleagues, judges and personnel in the administration of the court, which is of a very high quality, and to continue to defend the 800 million people in Europe eligible to seek justice against any violation of their rights by their own country.